Welcome everyone to our webinar on Plasma Cloud and simplicity of uh, Plasma Cloud integration. Um, maybe for those who don't know um, what Plasma Cloud is, we will do a really quick intro before we um, go into a deep dive. So today the main uh, goal is not a broad overview, but we're going into some of the specifics that um, we have developed over the years, um, the last um, years that we worked on Plasma Cloud. Um, but before we go there, just um, a quick uh, overview of what Plasma Cloud is and, and where we came from, etc. So um, Plasma Cloud is a um, network management company. We produce um, and sell access point and switches that are all cloud managed, uh, which allows you to um, monitor and manage your devices um, from wherever you are remotely in most cases. Um, probably large amounts of devices in different locations. Um, our main uh, target groups are hospitality, retail, offices, education, and some IoT. Basically everywhere where you need to install lots and lots of network equipment as an installer uh, or a reseller business, uh, maybe also rebranded business, um, we all cater um, to those groups. Um, so that you can easily keep track of what is going on in these various networks without being in that location necessarily yourself um, or even driving to that location. Um, you can also manage um, changes to those networks and um, handle troubleshooting sessions remotely um, all through our interface. A quick, um, a quick overview about um, what we do and, and what we have. So, um, of course, you can manage uh, accounts uh, in the name of your company business, or you can share access with other um, employees or your partners um, that are on location. Uh, we, off we offer a lot of features that, that come along with this, from alerts to um, rebranding, um, a lot of features um, that you need to troubleshoot remotely, etc. Um, maybe you have heard about um, Open Mesh before. We are um, sort of um, Open Mesh veterans, or partially at least. Uh, many of the uh, Plasma Cloud crew have worked at Open Mesh before, and we um, decided to create Plasma Cloud out of the ashes that uh, Open Mesh uh, left behind because we already at the time we were working at Open Mesh felt very strongly about. Um, a low-cost, um, affordable, and easy-to-use solution um, that makes a network management really easy, simple, um, at, at a really good price. I mean, there are a couple of other uh, companies out there that offer cloud management solutions, um, mostly focusing on the enterprise and high-end um, sector, whereas we focus on um, rather the mid and low-end, which is you know, it has to be really easy to manage, it has to be affordable, um, and you want to manage lots and lots of them. So this is just a quick overview um, about who we are and um, what, what we stand for. If you have any questions, um, feel free um, to send them over to Angela. We, will have, we have time um, at the end to answer any questions you may have. Um, but now we'll be going a little bit into details. Um, if you are interested and a little bit lost because we go right in um, in the next couple of minutes, um, feel free to reach out to us and uh, we can give you a starting point um, if, if need be. Um, otherwise, I will, without further ado, we go into um, the uh, deep dive. So um, today's topic, uh, topics, uh, so to speak, are all about um, switches and access points and how they play together um, in a larger, in the larger picture and in the world of Plasma Cloud. How do how do these two types of products, which serve very different purposes, um, but they still overlap a lot, and how can how can that um, work? when you have a system that really tries to go out of your way and tries to make things as simple as possible um, and helping you to get to, to keep track of what is going on uh, in the networks that you have deployed. That is 
um, basically the overarching topic for today. Um, we have a lot of ground to cover and we will talk a lot about connected devices uh, as one uh, big topic chunk. And we will also talk about um, VLANs as that is a common integration point between access points and switches in larger networks. Now, before we uh, go and dive into Plasma Cloud, we want to look a little bit at where we are today. Um, what are common issues that you face as um, installer or integrator um, when you arrive in venues um, that you may have taken over and you want to now outfit with new equipment um, or you have outfitted a year or two ago and now all of a sudden there's an issue and you need to figure out what is going on um, to resolve that issue. And we find ourselves in a pretty complex landscape um, where more and more wiring all over the place um, is needed to run access points, um, voice over IP phones, switches, routers, servers, everything. And it can get easily um, quite daunting to keep track of um, what is happening. And of course, even later when you go to a location or you try to avoid going and you try to use Plasma Cloud through a remote troubleshooting session, you have to figure out what is going on and how to fix whatever the problem might be. And then you're faced with you know, something like uh, these pictures. Um, I'm sure you will have seen that in some way or form you know, across uh, different installations. And then somebody you know, says, hey, well, you know, a cable is maybe wrong in the wrong spot or it's broken down or whatever, and it becomes a nightmare to figure out what is going on. Um, another common um, scenario that you may find yourself in is uh, when you manage switches, um, the configuration of such switches, um, especially when it comes to VLAN management and the, all the individual ports and settings that they are, can be quite daunting as well. Um, often um, UIs, and we have studied a lot of UIs before um, we went and built our own, um, are built like chess boards where you have every possible setting and every possible port and every possible combination. And when you then look at this and try to figure out, you know, what is misleading or what is wrong or what is what has to be changed when you want to, you know, introduce a change to your network, um, you will spend quite some time um, and inevitably make mistakes because it's it's so hard um, to understand what leads um, where and uh, why is it not working, etc. Of course, these UIs are already a step forward. Um, traditional switches um, are configured through a command line interfaces, which are even harder um, to keep track of and, and, and comprehend in, in setups. Um, but we, um, when, when we looked at all of that, we, we had um, long discussions, you know, how can we take this to the next level? Um, and we will be talking about that in a little bit. Um, next to these configuration issues, um, once you go into the VLAN setups, uh, the next hurdle you're faced with that you have various VLANs scattered all over your network um, that are supposed to leave and enter certain switchboards, going to certain devices, um, and maybe you have some um, complex rules on top of that. Um, and the larger the network, the more complex the setup, the harder it is to understand um, why something is the way it is and what you need to change to make, um, you know, to implement a change that you, that you asked for um, or your customer, customer may ask for. Um, so uh, it's, it, it, again, it gets um, quite hard to understand what is going on if you need to dwell and, and uh, dive into each individual device and port and understand which VLAN is configured where and where does it lead to, et cetera, et cetera. So this is, this is basically the starting point for um, Plasma Cloud when we uh, came into this uh, switch world and, and decided to bring something new to the table. Um, our main goal was um, to make everything really simple um, as we had already done with access points and make it um, so that it's easy to understand what is happening in a network. Um, and it gives you a lot of options without being in your way in an intuitive manner. Um, and the best way to um, to demonstrate all of that is we will just um, 
switch to our Plasma Cloud console, which is the main interface um, for, uh, for managing all of the networks on Plasma Cloud, all of the equipment of Plasma Cloud. Um, for that purpose, we have a, um, a demo console, um, which is essentially a sandbox where we're switching to um, the demo right now. And um, this sandbox has the advantage of you being able to access um, that demo console. Um, so you can see it's just demo.console.plasmacloud.com. Um, you can also open that um, later after this webinar and you can um, browse around and surf um, and, and see you know, how it looks like, what is the feeling, what features does it have, etc. It's basically a snapshot of our, um, of our user facing uh, interface. And uh, it has data from a real world installation, but it's a snapshot, um, as I had mentioned. So um, you cannot break anything. You can, you can look at all the changes. We can make changes and we will do some changes, um, but the sandbox will not allow us to save those changes. We'll simply say, you know, this is a sandbox. You can't, you can't make any changes. Um, but at least we could, uh, we can demo how it all works and how it functions all together. Um, in case you don't remember this URL and, and the login credentials, et cetera, um, you can find all of that on our website as well. On plasmacloud.com, there is a link in the description um, how to get to this uh, demo sandbox. So without further ado, this is um, the typical screen that uh, you are presented with when you um, log into the into your account on Plasma Cloud, on the Plasma Cloud console. Um, you have a map where you can uh, position your devices. Um, so give you a, a little bit of a, a visualization. You can click on these um, little dots to give you an idea um, of the devices that you have in this network. Um, Plasma Cloud distinguishes um, networks and organizations. You can see on the top uh, right of uh, the screen, um, organizations are basically just groups of networks, and networks typically are locations um, that you uh, install equipment in, and then you can differentiate these different uh, locations based on their names, um, and of course you can apply different settings. In this particular sandbox so for today, we have prepared just one organization with a single network, uh, which is the demo office network, and that is what we're looking at right now. Um, later on, you may have different uh, different names for your networks, a number of networks, and a number of organizations. Um, so, just a quick view at um, at uh, this particular network. So, we on the left side we have the main menu. We have access points, um, switches, clients, etc. And if we um, click on the access points, we get a quick overview at the access points that are in the network. We have uh, in this demo network we have three access points. Um, that you see in the table there are a couple of statistics that just shows you the channels these access points operate on, um, the uptime, last check-in, et cetera, et cetera. Um, on top, you have a graph that shows you the, tra the traffic and uh, how many clients are connected. It's Again, the main purpose is just to give you an overview about the health status and what of each of these access points are doing at this very moment or were doing in the past. Um, but we will not go into any further detail here um, because we will focus on um, switches and access point integration. So um, let's click on the um, next item, uh, which are switches, uh, to just give you an overview of the switches we have in this demo network. In this particular case, we have four different switches um, that represents our entire uh, switch product line from the smallest switch um, the PS8L, which is an eight-port switch, over the um, mid-sized 24-port switch to the really big 48-port switch um, with SFP ports. Um, when we talk about switch and access point integration, the first thing that comes to mind is, of course, um, the powering of the access points. All of our switches are PoE switches, so they do power um, all of our access points, and we will just click on the uh, PS8L here to get an idea of um, what is happening. Again, we are zooming into the details of that particular switch. We have our eight-port switch, a neat visualization of that switch. 
On the top, we have a name that can be modified and a MAC address and firmware version and all these um, just generic um, statistics along with the current consumption of the PoE budget on the right hand side, showing you how much of the PoE budget um, is currently in use and how much is still available to power other devices. Now below um, on the switch um, graphic, we have a representation of the current status of the switch and each individual switch port. And as we hover over the switch ports, um, we get an idea of um, what each port is doing. So port one, for example, is disconnected. So that's why it's shown in black and it shows us the details. It says, it's, you know, there's no connection, no power draw. And whereas the second port um, is connected, that's why it's shown green. Um, you can see there are a number of um, other devices behind it. That's why it says there are nine clients behind this particular port. Um, it gives you the idea about the link speed. And um, here we see um, also a connected device. Um, the switches detect each other um, automatically, no matter which port you connect them to. And they will um, share information about what switch is connected on which port which is um, why this uh, Plasma Cloud console is able to show you that on port two of the PS8L, we have a connected device leading to the PS24L um, on the other side. Now, before we go into that um, detail of connected devices, um, just wanna highlight the blue port um, shows us that there is a PoE consumer connected. Um, and in this particular case, um, we see that there is a power draw of 3.9 watts at this point. Um, and again, we get a name um, that is the, that device is called entrance. The yellow, um, the yellow bar or the yellow uh, golden, the golden um, highlight of port eight basically indicates that this is the port that leads to the uplink to the internet. Um, so that gives you at a quick glance, you know, which ports are enabled, which ports are active, which ports are powering PoE, and which port is your uplink port towards the internet. Now, um, if you're a little bit confused what these colors means, below the switch you see a, a really quick um, legend that, that gives you an overview about what these various colors um, do or, or represent. Now coming back to the connected devices, we can see that below um, the visualization of the ports, we have a table and each port has an entry in this table, um, which is pretty standard. You have seen that in others, which configurations, uh, configuration tools, I'm, I'm pretty sure about that. The um, key thing I'd like to highlight here is the connected device column. Again, this is um, the information which is automatically detected. So if you were to use Plasma Cloud switches in your network and you plug in a cable, um, there's no need to manually enter anything anywhere. Um, the switches will detect themselves um, and the Plasma Cloud console will reflect um, where, to which port, what other devices are connected to. And in this particular case, we can see again that the PS24L is connected um, on port two of that particular switch and on the other side, it's port one. Um, we can even click on um, the PS24L name. You see it's, it's highlighted in blue and um, once we click, it will lead us immediately to that particular device and um, we can then look at the configuration of that switch. And when we hover over port one, um, as we had seen uh, before, if we hover, um, here we can see that it also reports the eight port switch being connected to port one um, as we have seen the, the other direction um, from the eight port switch um, before. So we can see both sides find each other on the ports and you can easily see what is connected where um, without any manual intervention that will just work automatically. And on top of, what, of that, we can see that the port one, uh, which is highlighted here uh, with the yellow um, or the golden uh, bar, that the eight port switch is the uplink switch for the 24 port switch. So again, this is um, just an easy way to get an idea how is the network configured um, after you've left it all alone, maybe for a number of months or even years. Now, um, 
we click again uh, on the link of the PS8L on the connected device just to jump back to show it works both ways and we're back on the eight board switch. Now I want to um, focus your attention on port five. Um, we had seen before that port five, which is highlighted in blue here, is drawing pure e-power. And in the table, um, we can see that port five um, links again um, to a device, which is the access point um, entrance device. Uh, the access point is called entrance and it's connected on Ethernet port two. And because this, um, this device is powered through PoE, we can see in the last column of this um, table, we have a little action item that's not available on the other ports. The reason for that is because it is PoE powered, we can power cycle the device. And again, to make things easy and to avoid um, you know, clicking on the wrong port, um, once you choose this option, it shows you the name uh, and gives you the option to power cycle the port by um, disrupting the power uh, real quick. And it shows you the name so that you cannot click um, into the wrong uh, port and power cycle it. This works because also our access points are part of this big family of um, recognizing ports and connections to one another um, in an automated fashion. So if this um, access point were connected to another switch board or you change the cable on the access point side, it wouldn't matter. Uh, the cloud would learn that um, within a few minutes and would update and reflect that change in the UI. So this is all just an easy way to give you, um, you know, to give you an idea of how everything is wired together. And icing on the cake is a visualization which we have um, just uh, put in on this page. On the top left, you have a little toggle which we disable just to not overwhelm you when you click on it. Um, so when you open the page, it's disabled, but you can enable it. And then you get a, a visualization of all the devices that are connected. Um, you get little um, icons there. Um, the blue icons here um, represent plasma cloud devices. And the red colors represent devices which are um, either not Plasma Cloud or not part of this network. So it is easy to distinguish between Plasma Cloud controlled devices and third party devices. These are the two main colors that we have here. On top of that, um, the icon itself tells you what type of device it is. So I had mentioned that the entrance device is an access point. And as you can see, you have a little Wi Fi icon there. And that is what shows you it is an access point. If you can click on this um, icon and get a real quick view, okay, this icon represents a PA1200, uh, which is wired to port five um, on that particular switch. And we can click on the uh, PS24L as well, which will just um, confirm what the name already says, that this is a PS24L switch um, connected to this particular port. Um, you could also um, jump to this particular device by clicking on the um, on the name on top, but we don't want to do that. We, we have already demonstrated that. Um, it will give you the same ability to jump between different devices if you're interested in why is that particular device or what is that device. Again, you want to look at it, et cetera. Now, talking about the red icons, um, because those are not part of Plasma Cloud, or not part of this particular network, there is limited information um, of what we can show here. So if we click on this icon, um, we can see it is a Wi-Fi um, device because this device um, announces its capabilities as a Wi-Fi device, but we do not know what brand it is um, or what model of a particular brand it is. So that we are not able to show you, um, you know, a particular device type or model um, here. Um, we can only show you it is connected. Here's the name. Um, we know it as a Wi-Fi device. Um, unfortunately, we cannot show you as much information as we can show you about Plasma Cloud devices. Um, and again, the same happens if we click on the, um, the uh, Open Media Vault NAS device. Um, we cannot show you what is going on here, and we don't offer a – our console doesn't offer a jump to go to details because we have no details available about this particular device. Um, we can just tell you because um, we know this network, 
Uh, this is a third party access point that is uh, connected there. And um, the Open Media Vault NAS is an NAS system that acts as a file server that um, is automatically detected by our devices and is displayed in, uh, in that visualization to make um, it as easy as possible for you. We try to gather as much information um, to make it easy. And if we jump to the um, some of the other switches, so we could just jump around to give you an idea how, how things can look like when we have a lot of switches. So if we just go to the um, PS24L um, switch, uh, then um, we can also enable again here the uh, connected devices visualization. And we will see that um, this switch, because there are more ports, we have devices uh, that are shown on the top because they're connected to the top ports of that particular device. Um, and there are devices that are connected to the lower row. And, and again, we have blue icons for devices that are Plasma Cloud managed in this particular network. And we have red for devices um, which are um, third party devices, or in this particular case, here we have a device which is a Plasma Cloud device, but it's part of another network. So um, that is also shown, you know, hey, you have a Plasma Cloud device here, um, but it doesn't belong here, or it is not part of this network. It could also be a configuration mistake. Um, and that is why it's highlighted in the red color. And also available, a limited information is available. Now at this point, you may be wondering, you know, we have put all this effort to auto detect all these devices and we have a nice visualization that shows you which cable is going where, which will be super helpful um, if you are faced with a, um, you know, a lot of cables going all over the place and you want to know which cable you have to change position um, with, etc. cetera. Um, but what if I want to know, I want to really understand this network. And um, if you are like me, and you just have seen these two switches, but you don't really know how things are wired. How, what is the layout? What is the topology of this particular network? Um, because you, you may wonder how to, you know, how is a certain device connected where and what has to be changed? Um, so to answer this question, we have released um, a feature which we have worked on quite extensively, which we call the layer two topology page. And actually we can just click and there's another jump. So either you can find it on the left in the menu. Um, that's an easy way to always go um, to the layer two topology or um, each device has a link um, next to the port status that is for switches and also for access points. So we'll see that in a little bit to jump to the layer two topology and find this particular device. And we will just start by doing that. Just click on the link here. Um, layer 2 topology, the layer 2 topology is loaded and you will see a bird view of the network as it is wired, as it was auto detected. So again, we have the same icons, as I mentioned before, you have blue icons, you have red icons, blue icons represent the plasma cloud devices that are part of this particular network, the red icons are either third-party devices or Plasma Cloud devices that are part of another network. Now, because we clicked on the PS24L, we see um, it is highlighted on this particular um, view here. So you know exactly where in your topology is the switch that you were looking at. We can also jump back by just clicking on the 24L rec name, and we'll just do this for the sake of um, demonstration, and we go back and we could um, configure this particular switch so there's no um, no need to search around, no need to um, you know wonder am I at the right switch or whatever. You can just follow all these um, really convenient jumps between the UI um, to manage these various configurations. Now we go back to the layer two topology to um, dive a little bit into um, what we can see here and why um, we've been doing what we've been doing. So um, maybe the first thing to take and I mean, there's a lot to unpack, and we'll try to go through each piece step by step. Um, bear with me. It's super helpful once you get the hang of it, and we try to make it really simple um, to to navigate. Um, so I think it's it's relatively straightforward once you know the ins and outs. So uh, for starters, it's important to realize that um, our cloud 
because it is a cloud, is able to generate a bird view uh, topology information about your network. That means it looks at all the ports of all the devices that are wired together, access points and switches, and um, generates this topology view out of this information automatically. You may have seen something like that um, from some of the um, higher end uh, manufacturers out there, um, but we think this is such an important feature to manage complex networks. We bring it down um, to, to this level here. So we can see from this graph that the PS8L is actually um, the root of the network. Beyond the PS8L, we have no more information and all the different uplink ports lead to the PS8L, which is why it is on the left and represents the root of your network, or in this particular case, that demo office network. And from the PS8L, we see there are a bunch of lines going to other devices. These are, these are all the connected ports on the PS8L leading to other equipment that may be plasma cloud equipment or third party equipment. And um, we were starting by the entrance um, device looking at this. We see again, it is an access point. We can tell by the um, Wi-Fi icon, we can click on it. Um, again, we get an idea what the um, type of dev what the what device type we're talking about. Um, an interesting feature here about access points is the number of clients um, that this view also shows you. So um, you can also see this little um, icon, this user icon on top of the access point um, with the number inside just shows you how many Wi-Fi clients are connected to this particular access point at that very moment. Um, this can help you to see um, if your network has certain um, load issues in, in areas because a lot of access points, uh, sorry, a lot of Wi-Fi clients connect to very few access points and then um, overload that access point instead of you know spreading out more access points and using different cables, etc. That's why this view um, presents you with the um, the number of Wi-Fi clients connected to a to an access point. Um, then we have a dotted line leading to another access point, and this dotted line represents the mesh network. So the office network is connected via mesh to entrance, which is then wired to the PS8L um, and then goes to the uplink, to the internet, basically. And all of this you can learn within 10 seconds by just looking at this um, topology as it is auto-generated um, with very, very little effort. Um, Again, we can see that the mesh device has three Wi-Fi clients. Just for completeness sake, we can see um, there's the three um, showing up in the user icon. You can also click um, to get the details. Um, I want to focus your attention on one more, um, uh, one more type of connection that uh, is visualized here, and that is the a dash line we see between the PS24L and the 48 port switch. So of course, all the switch wiring is also shown. Um, why is this particular um, line dashed? The reason is this is a redundant connection. The PS48L is connected to the 24 um, and then to the 24L, and still there is a connection, a direct connection between the 24L and the 48 port switch. Um, this link has been disabled by STP to prevent a bridge loop from happening, from building. STP automatically will um, select links that are redundant to be um, to be disabled and used later in case um, the working link is breaking down um, and then it will just automatically flip over. Nonetheless, this visualization just shows you there is this redundant link. You can also click on links and um, once you click, you will see um, the link types. So in this case, uh, it's an Ethernet connection between the two switches, we see the speed of um, that link connection, and we see it is currently disabled by STP. And on top of that, you have a neat visualization showing you which board is connected with which other board on the other side um, when talking about you know, two switches that are connected to each other. Um, when we click on the connection on the link between, for example, the access point and the switch, um, the entrance and the um, 
and the PSHL or the server room. Uh, in both cases, again, we see um, the port numbers as everything is connected um, together. So there's no guesswork or cable colors or whatever. You will just see which port is connected to which other port. It's really easy to understand. Um, on, uh, on top of that, um, for the uh, third-party devices, again, we don't have this much of this level of detail. We can still click on the links and we can tell you um, what is the port number on our side. And we, of course, cannot tell you what's the port number on the other side simply because these are third-party devices and we don't have the information available. So um, this is just the limit of what we can show you. Um, this may come in handy um, in networks where you have a lot of voice over IP phones um, that typically also uh, show up in these topologies and you can see how they're all wired. They will also announce themselves in the network and you can have um, a really easy overview about how everything is wired and if something is going down, etc. cetera, um, you can easily um, grasp that here. Okay, so um, at this point, you have a really good idea how everything is wired together, how connected devices, this is what we call connected devices, all fit together. And as you have seen, um, it of course works best if you combine um, the Plasma Cloud switches with the Plasma Cloud access points as we um, have spent a lot of effort in integrating them really well. Um, and of course, we will continue to do so for upcoming features that are planned. Now, the next level of complexity that you can bring into such a network is the VLAN configuration. And unlike other solutions, um, VLANs here on Plasma Cloud are their own thing. Um, so as to um, that VLANs have to be created under the settings uh, menu. Um, you will find a section for VLANs. It's a bit similar to SSIDs um, in that you can create as many as you like and you give them names and we can just click on um, maybe the management VLAN to give you an idea. The management VLAN will be available on every network that's created by default. At the moment, you can enable, disable um, VLANs. The management VLAN cannot be disabled. It's always required. Um, it has a certain VLAN ID and a name. Um, the management VLAN is a bit special in that you cannot edit it. Um, all other VLANs can be modified by uh, you and created. So you can just um, change the name. You can give it a name, change the name later on, um, give it a VLAN ID. Um, and that name will be used everywhere later on, just it's easier to recognize and easier to use. Um, and it will always be referencing this particular VLAN ID. In the future, we will be adding more features uh, to specific VLANs um, like ACLs or shaping, etc. And that will all just be then in these VLAN settings. For the time being, um, we offer um, VLAN IDs or VLAN tagging as the first basic feature and integration between switches and access points. Now, after you've created this, this uh, VLANs um, here, um, you will use those VLANs um, for switches and access points. So we were looking first um, at the access points because um, those are um, more known out there. So if you go to your SSID configuration, and in this particular case, the staff SSID that we have created for this demo network, um, we want a SSID, an SSID um, to be bridged into a VLAN or all traffic that comes out of this SSID to be tagged with a certain VLAN um, that will then be further processed by the network. So we have um, put this SSID into bridge mode um, and then have enabled VLAN tagging and then we can select from the VLAN list um, that we have created before and um, the VLANs that are available and what this will do is it will just configure this access point um, to automatically tag all traffic that um, Wi-Fi clients generate on that particular SSID um, with this tag. Now, if you have already some experience with VLAN tags, you know that this is only the first step. Um, VLAN tags tend to be very complicated. 
because you need to configure them across a number of devices to make it all work. So you need to configure your access points, you need to configure your switches, and you need to configure some router or a VLAN management appliance to put all the pieces together. Now, to make those first steps as easy as possible, um, we will talk about how this all fits together on Plasma Cloud with the access points and the switches covered. So on the access points, it's as simple as enabling VLAN tagging and selecting your VLAN tag. Now you want to go and configure um, the switches to um, also handle this VLAN um, correctly. So we go back to the switch list and we will just start with the eight port switch. It's just the easiest to um, look at because it just has a limited number of ports. And now we are not looking at the port settings, but we will switch to the VLAN settings menu that's a tab that's here in the background. It will again um, show us a uh, switch um, visualization of, you know, a, a representation of the actual switch. And on the top, you can select the VLANs again as you have created them. Uh, there's a simple drop down you can uh, choose. We just start with the management VLAN because, again, it will be always there once you, if you buy a new switch, this will be the default configuration. You will see the management VLAN there. And we can see that all ports. Um, are assigned to the management VLAN in the blue color, which simply means that if you connect a device to um, that port and that, had, and that device doesn't know anything about VLANs, it will be assigned to the um, VLAN, the management VLAN. And on the way out, the tag will just be removed and, and the device doesn't know anything about that and it's just a way to handle devices that don't know about VLAN tags. Um, a more interesting uh, or more advanced configuration is the so-called allowed VLANs. Um, and this is basically VLAN filtering, if you want. And that's why it's called allowed VLANs. And those are shown in the red color. So we will just switch to a different um, VLAN uh, from our list. Um, yeah, let's just take the staff um, VLAN here. And we can see that the allowed VLAN is currently um, assigned to port five and eight, that means the staff ID VLAN, so traffic tagged with the staff ID, staff VLAN is allowed to enter and leave the switch on port five and eight. And because it's not assigned to any other port on that particular switch, tag traffic is not allowed. So this tag traffic of that staff VLAN um, will just be um, filtered out. Now the main, the key idea here of this visual way is just to make it easy to assign VLANs or like allow certain VLANs to be assigned to ports uh, or not filtered or filtered and switch between uh, different VLANs in a very visual way. A very cool feature I want to show is also that you can just drag and drop, uh, sorry, not drag and drop, but you can drag and click and drag to assign multiple ports. So you can just click on the port and you drag it along and then all of these ports are assigned to this particular VLAN. Now, of course, we would need to hit the, hit the save button, which we can't do in the sandbox. But once you have your own switches, you can play around with this. Um, we just quickly will switch to a, um, a bigger switch. Uh, maybe we just click on the connected device uh, 24 port switch. So just to show how this works on larger switches, because it becomes really handy um, just clicking on the ports to select um, or to enable certain VLANs. Uh, if you have a lot of ports to manage, um, then you want to know what um, what you can do. So again, we can see here at a quick glance, the, man the management VLAN is assigned to most ports, not all ports. Um, and we could uh, just pick any other VLAN and assign a number of ports um, to that um, by just clicking either on the ports or by, by dragging, uh, clicking and dragging, and thereby selecting a whole range of ports that get assigned to this particular VLAN. Below um, the switch visualization, there's also a table overview. Um, again, the, the idea is that you can see which device are you actually changing to. So you can see on port one that PS8L is assigned. So you want to know. Um, you know, hey, behind this port, I have this device, so therefore I need to assign certain VLANs. And the same applies to access points if you have 
SSIDs assigned to certain um, VLANs. So you have an easy way to see and understand which device is behind which port and therefore which VLANs you need to assign. You can also get this information by hovering over the port. Um, so if you just move your mouse or your, your point of view, um, then you can see that certain uh, ports have certain management VLANs, certain other allowed VLANs, and you can see the connected device if there is one um, assigned to um, that port. And that would tell you if something is missing or not. Now, um, the absolute pinnacle on all of this is, of course, it still leaves you with the headache. You know, have I configured everything correctly? Do all the VLANs flow the way they flow and can they flow the way they flow? Um, because, um, you know, somebody connects something somewhere and says, oh, I don't have a connection. Why is that? Um, and this is a, a real nightmare if you go into larger networks. Um, and to help with that, we again go back to our layer two topology view, um, which also has been integrated with our VLANs. And once it has loaded, um, please take note of this drop down that we have ignored before on the top of this page. And you will see that all the VLANs that we have created show up here. Now, we will demonstrate how this works one by one uh, in just a bit, um, just to explain the general concept here. The idea is when a device, uh, all the devices are connected via ports, Ethernet ports, or even mesh in that particular case here, um, and they may require a certain VLAN configuration. And what you want to know when you look at your network from this in this bird view um, perspective, you want to know, do all the devices have the correct VLAN configuration? And to make your job really easy, this tool will highlight certain devices when they are part of a VLAN and not highlight them when they're not part of a VLAN. And this will allow us to understand, you know, is there a misconfiguration or is everything as it should be? Now, to make this clear, we'll just go from the top to bottom through all the VLANs that exist in this network. And we will just use this visualization to understand how the VLAN is configured and what it is supposed to do and whether it's doing um, you know, is it working as expected or if this can do anything meaningful or not. So we'll just start with the first one, which is called DMZ. And by clicking on it, we'll see that most of the devices are in a semi-transparent fashion. And only the devices that have this particular uh, VLAN assigned are highlighted. So we can see that two access points actually have this VLAN assigned. And that is why they're highlighted. And because this VLAN doesn't go, so the PS8L is not highlighted, so this VLAN isn't going anywhere. So um, that would already indicate, because this is a Wi-Fi device, you would know, okay, there must be an SSID that is using this DMZ VLAN, that um, this connection cannot work. So any Wi-Fi client that will connect to this SSID using this VLAN will not be able to connect, will not be able to communicate with the network because this VLAN doesn't go anywhere in your network. Now we'll look at the next VLAN that we have in our list, which is the public VLAN. And in this particular, in this particular VLAN is configured across the different switches that we have. Um, and you can see that the eight port switch, the 24L and the 24 port switch, they all have, um, this uh, this VLAN assigned, and the link is also um, highlighted here. But we can see that the link between the 24 and the 48 port switch is semi-transparent. And this would indicate that we do have an issue here, because you would assume that the 48 port switch is assigned as VLAN, but the link is not highlighted. So the 48 port switch is, is shown in full strength here, so it has the VLAN assigned. And we can quickly jump um, to this 48 port switch to check um, the public uh, VLAN assignment by clicking on the name of the switch and then going to the VLAN configuration and selecting the public um, VLAN from the dropdown. 
And then we can see that indeed the public VLAN is assigned on port um, 29, but the uplink port is currently wired to port 31. That is why we have the golden frame around the port. So we see that somebody attempted to configure this VLAN uh, on that switch, uh, but either he got the, the port wrong or the cable was moved. And since then, the switch is no longer connected to this VLAN. Now, I, I, I want to stress here how powerful this can be if you want, have to understand why a certain VLAN configuration isn't working. Now, because we're running out of time, we'll quickly go back to our layer two visualization to um, cycle through the remaining um, VLANs before we take questions. Um, so here again, the restricted VLAN, we see it's only assigned to a single device to no link whatsoever. So that is probably a leftover VLAN of some point that was used at some point um, in the past and is probably useless at this point. Okay, let's go to the next VLAN. So we have the staff VLAN, and here we can see um, that is the SSID that we have configured um, earlier on the access points for our staff SSID, which we also have called staff, and we have a staff VLAN, um, and that is correctly configured and leads to the PS8L office, and from there, hopefully, to the uplink port um, and then works all the way and, and functions as intended. So the access points are included because the SSIDs use it and the switch is included because the 8L also has it configured and the link between the 8L is also correctly configured. Now, the last VLAN we have here is the management VLAN. Um, as I had mentioned, it's commonly assigned to all devices. It's just for um, cloud connection and, and all sort of management VLAN that the devices need to uh, communicate with the cloud um, or some uh, backbone that, that you may have in a network that's not really used for uh, payload traffic of, of ordinary users in the network. One little caveat again, um, you may have noticed that the red symbols, the third-party device or devices that are not part of this particular plasma cloud network were never highlighted. The reason for that, again, is um, there is no information about um, their VLAN assignment. Um, that may be some third party um, device that has a VLAN configuration or it doesn't have it, and, and we don't know. That is why um, they are never highlighted. We cannot help with the VLAN uh, situation in that case. So, and with that, I will conclude here. We have about, well, we have a couple minutes left for questions. Again, the general idea is to show you how um, access points and switches on Plasma Cloud integrate together to make your life easy and help you understand what is going on in the various networks that you manage. And um, do we have any questions, Angela? Yes, we do. Thanks, Merrick. Um, there was a question that came earlier um, when we were doing the intro. Um, if there is any support questions, um, where can they actually go to? Is there a place that they can actually pick up the phone and call, or is it just um, through an email? Um, any any tips on that? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Thanks for the question. It's a good question. We have a support um, portal on support.plasmacloud.com, um, which mainly functions as um, as a, a, a storage for all our various articles that help you guide. We have guides and explaining articles. So all of these things that I just mentioned are explained in, in various uh, pages of documentation and graphics and diagrams and everything. Um, you could go through at your own pace if you like to, um, to get all the details uh, because I had to go through over a lot of stuff in a very short time. Um, if you have further questions, you can also um, reach out to our support team on um, support.plasmacloud.com. Um, we will be answering your questions um, mainly through our ticketing system at this point. Um, at a later stage, we may introduce telephone um, support via a premium support package, but that's not available at this moment. Great, thank you. Um, next question is, um, is it true that you can take your old cloud tracks dashboard into Plasma Cloud? 
Yes, that is correct. Um, there is a way to migrate uh, your open mesh hardware from CloudTrax uh, to Plasma Cloud. Just real quick, because this is a topic on its own. Um, we have a neat um, um, tool which allows you to uh, import data. So that is uh, below the network option. You have an import CloudTrax network option. And once you click on it, you will be presented with this um, screen where you can input your CloudTrax API key and secret. Again, there is documentation about where to get this key and secret from CloudTrax. And then this tool will fetch um, your list of CloudTrax networks using your key and secret, um, and then will perform the import, it will import the data, and it will also migrate the hardware uh, by performing a, a firmware upgrade, a remote firmware upgrade. And then the ideal case, let's say in 80% of the cases, um, it's, it's mainly automated and there's nothing else to do than following this import guide. There are a couple of um, things to consider. Um, that is, we do not support all of the um, open mesh hardware that open mesh ever produced we have a page that highlights which models are supported we do support the most popular models but not all of them so we do recommend um, checking the supported list um, on our support website um, and in the us and, and north america and us and canada there are um, certain lockdown rules which um, which uh, have to be dealt with um, because it's uh, open mesh made it harder um, to install our firmware or general third-party firmware on their equipment in North America um, due to regulations. Um, covering all of that is a bit out of scope. Um, this just gives you a quick overview um, about what the process looks like. Great, thank you. Um, do you have any expectations to release a Wi-Fi 6 AP? Yes, um, we have already completed development of our Wi-Fi 6 AP. Um, we are just waiting for the access points uh, to come out of the factory and then um, they will be available for purchase. We, if you go to our website uh, under products, um, we have done already an inofficial launch of our PAX 1800, uh, which is our first Wi-Fi 6 model. Um, we haven't um, started marketing that aggressively because we're still um, struggling with COVID-related production issues. Um, the whole industry is suffering um, a little bit. I'm sure some of you have heard about um, chip shortages and, and we are affected as well. Um, that's the only thing that's holding us back, but our Wi-Fi 6 models are um, ready, partially ready, partially in the works, and you can go to our website to see what it looks like, um, and we will make a big splash announcement um, once the models are available for purchase. You can just go to our um, socials or, or check our website um, once the, uh, we'll make an announcement once the, um, the production is confirmed. Perfect. Um, well, it looks like we are right on time. Um, there aren't any other further questions that I can address. Um, as if there are any other questions, um, please reach out to a Streakwave or Plasma Cloud, and we'll happy to get those um, addressed for you all. Uh, again, Merrick, Plasma Cloud, thank you for this webinar. Uh, if there's any other things that you wanted to add, please do so. Yeah. Um yeah, thank you very much all for attending and thank you Streakwave for organizing this webinar. Please feel free to reach out to Streakwave or to our support. We uh, welcome your questions or input suggestions. Um, all of that is welcome. And also if you enjoyed this webinar and you feel like we should do more of these webinars and maybe focus on specific topics, please feel reach out to Streakwave and let them know. Um, we organize these webinars based on the feedback we get and, and the requests we get. So feel free to participate and, and just let us know um, if you're interested in a particular topic. We we're happy to um, do more webinars and, and help you to get started on, on Plasma Cloud. Okay, thank you. Thanks everyone. Awesome, thank you.